It says I'm live, 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 I'm live. Hey, everybody. Yes, it is a Sunday. I decided to come on here because of a certain person. I want to give a shout out to James Lott Jr. He just dropped the All My Children After Show um, audio on his, on his channel. Check it out on Spotify. And the topic was his two favorite All My Children theme songs. And the two that he picked is actually my faves um, as well. So I was going to come on and do a live anyway, because today is May 21st. And you're probably saying, the heck, Candace, what is so important about May 21st? Well, um, it's a really good number, 521. Um, <laughs> uh, you ready to listen to Keisha? Um, it's, uh, you know, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, um, here. It's not rainy. It's not dreary. Hopefully you guys are having good weather and you guys are in a great mood. Shout out to everybody, to all the parents who had to do proms from Friday to yesterday. I had, uh, cousins and I had, um, some other people who was, their kids were going to the proms and I saw their pictures and I felt bad cause I couldn't go to, you know, when they was coming out and doing their own things. But I saw y'all on Instagram and y'all did y'all thing. Okay. May 21st, 1999. It was a Friday. It was not too hot, but it wasn't too cold. And the reason I remember this is because 24 years ago today, I went to my junior prom. <laughs> I went to my junior prom and it was a beautiful night, magical, all that stuff. But here's the deal. The real truth is today is the anniversary of a big moment in daytime history. Big, huge. Today is the 24th anniversary of the famous, the streak is over, Susan Lucci. Dun, 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 dun. Susan Lucci has originated the role of Eric King since 19. It was today that the streak finally, it came to a halt right before the millennium happened. Susan freaking Lucci, after 19 nominations, finally won her daytime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series. It was, it, it was New Year's, it was, it was Christmas, it was everything rolled into one at Radio City Music Hall in New York City that night on CBS. Going into it, I think a lot of daytime fans can tell you, and even, you know, Mimi Tolkien and, and Alan Locker and Michael Fairman and, and James and everybody who was covering press for soaps at the time, there was this buzz of, okay, now, like, Susan Lucci, it's, it's Susan Lucci's 19th nomination. Now, are we going to go into the new millennium, <laughs> the new century time? When it, it is she going to go into 2000 and still not be a winner, or is this going to be the year? Is the is the end of the era going to happen tonight? Now, again, I'm at my prom, okay? So I'm like, you know, tearing up my heart when I'm with you, and hit me, baby, mom, you know, all that, right? Had a great time at my prom, I really did. But I didn't go to my after prom party, which I think was down the harbor or a sip and bite, which is which is ironic because I live around the corner from the restaurant. For those in Baltimore, you know what I'm talking about. I got back into the limo <laughs> and I came straight home. My dress and everything, my white dress that looked like a freaking bride's dress, I think. And I came home and it was, I'm going to say it was about 12 12 o'clock midnight and my great grandmother who I lived with, um, she was right there and she said, how was your prom baby? Fine. I'm going up the steps and everything. I was like, did you record the Emmys? Y'all remember y'all had to record, right? Okay. Before DVRs and all that, we had to record. She was like, I recorded and it, it, it's okay. It's fine. I was like, okay, I'm going up and watch it. She was like, but I got it downstairs. I got it here. So, the living room and dining room had the TVs, right? Okay. 
Mostly it was the living room, but everybody looked at from the dining room. Okay, so there, there you go. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I thought I can get the tape out and go upstairs in my room and watch it. No, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. this is what this is what Emily Emily said. We're gonna watch it together because I rewound it all the way back. See, I thought what I was gonna do was rewind it back because I, I figured that was like towards the end anyway, and I could see who won best show. But you know, I, I just wanted to go skip to the good part, right? No, she rewound it all the way back to the Price Is Right prom time special. I was fine with that. I was cool with it. I was I was totally cool with it. So we actually sat, me and my great grandmother, and watched the whole thing. <laughs> we watched when Heather Tom won uh, for outstanding lead actress for younger lead actress. I should say, Sharon Case winning her first and up until now, like well, her only Emmy. Who knows? The streak may be broken whenever the daytime Emmys come out, right? Okay. Then you had Tony Gary and Jonathan Jackson. And I'm going to say this. I think Jeannie Francis was robbed of a nomination, point blank period, that year. Um, But Tony Gary and Jonathan Jackson, you talk about a dynamic duo in daytime that was not a couple. You know, you have the super couples. And then you have people who just bounce off of each other and plays very well together. I think I could put also in that category of Jonathan and Tony, uh, Kim Zimmer and Tom Palfrey. They just, they, they boom, 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 ricochet, ricochet, ricochet. And so knowing this was Jonathan's, you know, year that, because remember Lucky died in 99. Remember that. So for Jonathan to win, um, you know, and, and that was the year that um, the little boy who played Nate, uh, Brian, and this is what I'm going to talk about in a minute, too, is um, that that still is a, a moment that that lives in my head. That picture of him, you know, Joshua uh, Morrow telling telling the little boy, it's OK, it's OK. And you'll understand why I say that, because we are, we're kind of going to probably deal with that later this year, whenever the daytime is that we have kids who are in a young younger position than the, the little boy Nate was. So, you know, um, that's what it is. Um, Stuart Damon won that year. He finally made it. And Stuart Damon won that year because uh, that was the Allen drug addiction storyline. Oh, my God. Killed it. Um, who else, What else was there that night? Um, see, Tony, Stuart. Oh, who, had, who won supporting? Sharon, I mean, that was a really good year. I mean, like, I think Ellen DeGeneres, Rosie O'Donnell dethroned. Like, I think Oprah had announced that she wasn't going to do it anymore. Um, so it was now ushering the new era of talk show hosts in that category because Oprah was dominating that. Um, I think, who else? By memory, um, I want to say maybe Sesame Street or author one for, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> and of course, General Hospital won, right? The Because it was literally on a streak. It was like, General Hospital. Da -da! Like everybody was going crazy. But the moment came like Tony Geary. And I'm going to say this. If Justin Deeds was still in the category. Because remember, Justin Deeds was like left, left and right. Like Justin Deeds, Justin Deeds, Justin Deeds, Tony Geary, Tony Geary. It was like, it was, it was like that. But, hey, hey, but the moment came when Samra Moore, who would, you know, the following year win, came out and it was like, it's time for the Divas of the Night. And they showed everybody's clip and everything. Now, going into it, I will say, I think Kim Zimmer had the lead. I think Kim Zimmer, because it was the whole Dolly, you know, that clone storyline. But it was Susan Lucci when she's like, Bianca, it's okay, Bianca. Like, it. so the moment happened. The moment was, you could, you could actually hear silence because it was like, hold somebody's hand, 
Call Jesus if we need to. And when Shamar Moore said the streak is over Susan Lucci, I'm going to say this. You will never, ever, hey, Lakina, ever witness something like that ever again in daytime at the Emmys. You won't. I would say the closest is probably when One Life to Live won in 2002. But, and the reason, because, you know, Gary Tomlin and Days of Our Lives fans, you know, you, you know, Kristen Alfonso, you know, but the fact that Susan Lucci won, that place erupted from the fans to the people on the floor to probably the behind the scenes people were crying, tearing up. Everybody was like, Hallelujah. Marsh, you say to this day, God rest your soul. She did it. She was like, raise the roof, raise the roof. You know, you saw Rebecca. If you clearly look at how the camera, like they show store Damon and Johnson Jackson. And, and even though we don't like him, Ingo, like he was like everybody, everybody from all the major networks and all the shows stood up for this woman because they knew how important this was. And, you know, when Oprah came out and said, you did it, did it, you know, that was respect. And I think, you know, and I like Shamar, like, I think Shamar said in, in, in an interview that he told her just to calm, don't, don't freak out, don't worry, you know. But it is like, you ain't never lied. Shout out to Sebastian, by the way. For the WGA, I saw that video. I saw that video. Go ahead, man. Um, but no, like with Susan Lucci, you know, the emotions just ran rapid because you you realize that you witnessed you at home, as well as the people who were there, witnessed history, right? History. And when Susan Lucci started doing her speech and everything, because you know they usually give two to three minutes. And then when she was like saying, I have so many people today, but they told me to wrap it up. I loved everybody's like unanimous was like, hell no. No, the, uh, we, she been waiting 19. We've been waiting 19 years. Kelly Ripper was like, no. And it was sort of poetic that the music was playing while she was like thanking her children. And then when she got to her husband, her late husband, um, her it just like the tears and then she said to the fans because in all honesty we have watched these shows and these actors grow in their performance so many times so over the years right and there is still some humble daytime actors who acknowledges the fans if it wasn't for us they would not be here right okay so when she was talking about her parents and the teachers, shout out to teachers, and then Agnes, and you know, it was just like all that. And around that time, remember, that's when they were starting to reduce her time. They were starting to reduce a lot of the, the major players' time because of the cheddar cheese, right? And so when she walked off the stage, everybody was still applauding. It was like you literally watch. You witness the history. Another thing that I remember clearly was, you know, after the daytime Emmys, like if it was ABC, they were like, congratulations, Tony Geary on your... Every network, ABC, rightfully so, CBS and NBC, all simultaneously congratulated Susan Lucci. Now keep that in mind. Susan Lucci was ABC. She wasn't on CBS. She wasn't on NBC. But because this was a moment, and Susan Lucci is a staple of daytime, they all did that. And then you had her on Newsweek, on TV Guy. I mean, this was his. She was on the, what was it, that Monday or Oprah. She was doing her, you know, TV shows. And you fast forward to think that 24 years later, when you still watch that clip, that has to be one of the top 
I don't, and I think they did a top five, like Emmy moments of all time. And hers was number one. Like that to this day, you get chills when you, it's like this, even though you watched it so many times and you know the outcome because you look it up on YouTube. But when they sit, when Shamar says the street is over, you know, like Rosie O'Donnell's holding her purse, you know, people crying, Rosie's mascara. You can tell she had foundation on too bad day. And, you know, she was, and it was just Kim, you know, all the other nominees, Kim Zimmer and Jean, and, you know, everybody was just so happy for her. And, you know, you, you realize that, you know, there was years after where she was nominated and, and, and whatnot. And, and of course, we'll talk about the, the mix up that one year when it was, they said Susan and everybody was like, Susan Lucci, and even Susan Lucci, but it was Susan Flannery. Um, but the fact that, you know, she won one and, you know, there's plenty of times was like, you see, did it air on ABC that year for, for Susan Lucci's. No, it was on CBS. Because remember, CBS, CBS had it, and then ABC had, let me see, 2004. By the way, hold on, I forgot. Uh, today also is the, the uh, anniversary of when Chad Brandon won his Emmy. So shout out to Chad, because that was the first person I let he let me hold his Emmy. Um, but let um, me see. Now, Chad, let me see, 2004 was, was NBC. 2003... I want to say with CBS, I think CBS had it for a while. And then, because NBC, let me see. Okay. No, 2003 was ABC. 2004 was NBC. Lord, look, 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 I'm going there, right? 2001, I want to say, let me see, 2000, 2000 was like, yeah. CBS had that. 2001, I think NBC had it. Yeah. Okay. I rem you know the reason I'm remembering this is because I remember 2004. Wait a minute. 2004 was What's that 2003, I think it was when uh Deidre Susan Lucci and Eric Braden open it up. And 2004, because 2003 was from a recent Vanessa one. Because that was a great day for the Son Sonny and Brenda fans. <laughs> ah! Ah! Sorry, sorry, got excited there for a minute. Um, 2004 was when Vanessa did it. 2005 was NBC because Nat Natalia Livingston won. Yeah. Y'all making me really use my brain. Y'all see the sweat glands? I'm literally sweating because I'm like, oh my God. Like, okay. Like I have to remember all of this. This is, this is why my brain sometimes is like, okay, I can't remember everything here. But no, that, like I said, two, 1999, that was like, that. and then another thing too is, and I'm, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it if the daytime Emmys, you know, whenever that happens. But here's another little Candace's tip. One of the things I loved about the daytime Emmys that year was um, they showed, and I think I'm making sure that I'm right on this, it's that they showed all of the daytime Emmy winners together. And I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, and I know some of them aren't with us anymore, you know, but still it's the 50th anniversary. Like, come on, come through. Like, I'm just like, I want Susan Lucci to host it there. I made my decision. Susan Lucci hosts the daytime Emmys whenever it happens for the 50th anniversary. Susan Lucci. There you go. Don't give it no lifetime. Well, dang. should she get the lifetime achievement award? Mm, good question. But yeah, that was, uh, 24 years ago. Just think about that. 24 freaking years ago, Susan Lucci won. I mean, seriously, where were you at 20, 24 years ago? I mean, we had Napster. We didn't have a lot of these networks. We, we did kind of have SoapNet, though. 
Uh, <clears throat> no, we didn't. We didn't even have soap net. What am I talking about, Candace? We had Soap City, though. <laughs> Oh, man. But no, I just wanted to come on because, you know, again, James had posted um, on his All My Children After Show, which, again, go to JLJ Media on Spotify to listen to his picks of the All My Children. And and again, like I said, I was going to come on later. Actually, I was going to mention it on Soul Party tonight, but I think we got a lot to cover tonight on Soul Party as far as news goes. Um, but I was like, this was a milestone. This was a big moment. Um, and for us who watched Susan Lucci on All My Children, and also for, again, and you can tell, you can tell that the genre has changed because of that moment. Because, again, you had more than four soaps, right? They all was was uh, featured. It was no separation of the categories. And so, see, we got some music. Because they know because they know today Susan Lucy's that. That should be a freaking holiday, by the way. Today, I declare it, today is National Susan Lucci Day. So, Susan Lucci, happy Susan Lucci Day. Why not? Why can't it, why can't it be a National Susan Lucci Day? about to tweet that too but i'm literally about to tweet that i'm like today is national susan lucci day call your friends let them know it's national susan lucci day (laughs) but now like i said i wanted to come on and uh just check in and say hey to you guys and um that's it get president biden on it you know what they used to remember. Okay, now y'all know later on this year is National Soap Opera Day, right? Okay, so you know my brain sometimes just goes overboard, right? Okay, so I know back in the day they had the soap opera festivals and stuff like that. I really hope, and I know that um my girl Lucretia Lyon did this earlier. I would really like for somebody to try again with soap con. Like seriously. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on YouTube, hit soap con. Um, Lucretia Lyons did an amazing job of bringing some people together. Alan Locker keep, keeps it going too. But I would really like a soap con in New York City. No offense, California, but we need something. In New York, okay? I'm just saying. It'll be like Comic-Con, but it'll be soap operas, right? It'll be digital, audio, and network, right? Past and present, writers, creators, you know, stuff like that. And we get to, like, do a... Okay, I'm going to get off now because I'm going to go and do laundry. (laughs) I'm just saying, that would be so... If they could do BravoCon... Why can't we have a soap con? Like for real. A three day or two, and it includes prime time too. We're not, you know, we're not, you know, taking that out. So it could be digital network, prime time, daytime, in between time. Oh my gosh. And that's where they can make the announcement that soap net's coming back in soap city and all new 24 hour soap channels dedicated to soaps. If you guys agree with that, please tweet that out. <laughs> Hashtag SoapCon 2024. <laughs> Have okay, because it'll be okay, it'll be James. Because you know, James, we gotta put James right. James would do the prime time stuff, right? And oh, oh, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. We could do live podcasts from there. So it would be JLJ Media, Daytime Confidential, uh, uh, Soap Central, because Dan Kroll has to be, excuse me, Dan Kroll has to be there for this. Of course, we love soaps. We'll be returning. Roger, Damien, Kevin, get on that. 
of course, so party, take two radio. Oh my god, bus. This can, oh my god, this would be so good. I'm sick. I am so serious now. Okay, I'm gonna go and do laundry now. <laughs> but if you guys think that's a good idea, tweet that out, you know, to, to the people that I just said. And you can get and we can get Robin Strasser. If you and make sure you're following her on Twitter because I kind of figured that was the situation back in the day. But for her to say it, I'm just like still irritated about it. I hashtag justice for Dorian and Mel. Okay. Thank you. So she is it's and it's good hot tea. That's why I wouldn't mind. Okay. Speaking of an Emmy Award winner, Robin Strasser, let me tell you something. She is like the aunt that comes with the good gifts. And when I say the good gifts, I mean the tea. To the point, like I said on, on my Twitter page, I would not mind it if she brought back her hotline or do the following, like sort of like Linda Dano is doing like with her podcast. And some of you guys actually said to, for Kristen Allison to help her with that. And I agree. I do feel as though, you know, Robin Strasser has been a part of this genre for a long time. Okay. She's the OG of playing a bad girl and also, you know, Rachel and Dorian. And don't forget the time that she was on Pacific Palisades. And, oh, yes, she was on Pacific Palisades. Y'all know that, right? She it was a guest then. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she was... And it was a guest then. It was a guest then. But she also was on 2000 Malibu Road. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. Um, but I will say, I would. I, I. It's always interesting when you have these legends, right, of daytime, giving you the behind the scenes stuff. Because I think for us, so fans. We hear from one side, but we never hear the other side unless somebody like somebody really asks that question. But then there's some people who are just like, you know what? I don't have no, I have zero. I'm gonna tell you how it how it really is. I'm going to confirm what you've heard, or I'm going to tell set the record straight. So when Robin Strasser said that about Mel. Cause I was watching during that time, and so was my um my grandfather, God rest his soul. And he even said that was wrong. Something was fishy with that. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know. It's either Robin Strass and you come up with a book, do a podcast, something. Same thing to you, Michael Logan. Yeah, I'm calling you out on my YouTube page. I need Michael Logan to do an interview with somebody. ASAP. Many of you guys know who I want him to do an interview with. But I want I want the real tea and nothing but the real tea. Not the herbal diet tea. I want the real tea, Michael Logan, from this person. No cutting around the bush. With the hedgehog. No. Mm -mm. Or the head, head trip, whatever that thing is. So. She drop any more tea. I'm so light nosy. I mean, yeah, that is coming up to. That was another thing I just thought about and somebody just posted it. We also um, found out that another world, that today was another world's last Emmys. Do you guys remember that? You remember? And I'm sorry, I'm going to be shady. When they said Linda Dano, you know, and she was coming out, 
uh, I, 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 I'm going to say this real close to the microphone. So y'all going to be like, Ooh, there were some people who were shady as I don't know what. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Take a look, take another look at it and whatnot. It was just like, you know, Oh, 19, I'm going to say this. If, if I had to pick, like which Emmys was like the, it would be 1999, followed by 2007. And the reason I say 2007 is because Gone Life finally won Best Drama Series. And it was a long time coming because that was the year they, the, the previous year, they finally got their act together, even though it was tied. They did. They did that. I would say 2002 for because One Life to Live finally won too, and that was they came off of the live week. Do y'all remember that One Life to Live did a whole a whole week live? General Hospital followed suit. We can talk about that another time. But yeah, so I just wanted to say Happy National Susan Lucci's Day because it's Susan Lucci's Day. Susan Lucci and. I can't wait to find out what they do with the daytime Emmys. Hopefully the strike, you guys, hopefully, hopefully everybody can just get their money and get what they want. And I'm not just saying it just because it's just, it does start with the writers. And if you don't have writers, you don't have talent. If you don't have talent, you got nothing. And they are moving up with the SAG uh, voting. You guys may have seen that, heard that. So um, everybody just, you know, let's, let's people above this, get your act together, pay these writers, get these actors and, and everything. So we can enjoy entertainment again. So I will talk to you guys later tonight on Soul Party 411 at 730, 830 Central, Central, 430 Pacific on TalkShoe.com. We got a lot to talk about. Talk to you guys later. Bye.